All right. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Had a subscriber suggest that I crack open this thing and uh, see what the hell's going on. How does it work? Frankly, I don't really know. I got the vague idea that there's somehow something engages and there's a rack and pinion and a, a flywheel. But outside of that, I don't really know what it looks like inside one of these. I've never ripped one apart. I haven't even bothered to watch any videos to see how they work. So let's just make a video of how it works. All right, I see that there's a cover on top here. Just a bunch of Phillips screws. Take them out. Without losing them. <laughs> All right, let's put this damn camera on. Nope, lost a screw already. Oh yeah. <laughs> Always goes where the worst place it could possibly go. Oh well. I would imagine 22 tons of power ain't gonna give a shit about a little screw. What are the odds I drop another one? Or strip one there, that one's stripped. Uh, I'll probably lose this one here. Hang on. Nope. Alright, put them in there. Try and get this one out. It's stuck. She goes. All right, big reveal. Or not? What the hell's holding it on? Oh, this nub. Little nub. Sometimes you have to mess with the little nub to get things to get off of there. Sometimes you got a little nub you got to play with. Sometimes you got to play with the big nub. Anyway, get that big nub off. It's nice when you can get both nubs off. That way everybody's happy. All right. Well, quite a bit going on there. It's more busy than I thought it would be. Let's just try and figure this out real quick. We have a safety mechanism. Hits that screw there so it doesn't go too far. I see it just simply stops that from engaging at all. So basically it's just a, you can't do shit if this ain't forward. So when that's forward, well, let's put our nub back on so we can actually function it. Might skip the sexual innuendo this time even though it was crossing my mind. Sometimes you have to put your nubs back in place <laughs> so you can go for another round. All right, so again, this is hard to do with one hand, so I'll put this camera down. All right, after looking at the whole thing, it looks a bit busy in there. It looks rather complicated, doesn't it? There's a lot going on, but it's actually quite simple. I'm not going to take the side covers off to show you the flywheels. That's pretty basic and I don't want to create the extra work of having to put them back on. It's like six bolts. Um, it's really simple. The motor down there is driving a V-belt pulley, a B-type belt, around this big flywheel. And that's all that's going on over there. Nothing engages the flywheel itself, which is I was wondering whether it was like some kind of way that it grabbed the actual shaft and was driving something else, but it's actually simpler than that. There's just a shaft running through and joining to this other flywheel, which just doubling your flywheel weight. So you have these two very large flywheels. They look to be probably, I don't know, I'm gonna guess around 100 pounds together. And what they do, they have a large long gear from one side of this frame to another and then there's a rack that sits above it it's held up by a little flat piece of thin spring steel here with a, 
a little roller bearing there just uh, to guide it I guess and that has a little spring sitting on top of it probably can't see it but it's holding the the rack up on an angle and uh, you can see that actually I just realized that now that this moves it's not engaged this just slides it comes all the way up until it, it hits underneath there somewhere I'm sure I don't know something's hitting something's hitting somewhere but anyway this here keeps this up in the air so it's up above it's floating above that gear now what happens is you got a bit of a linkage here and this linkage has a large roller on it so when you push this it's angling this linkage down and pushing that rack downward so let's see if you can see here see just drives it if you can see in there that pushes that down so when that rack gets into that gear it's just the force of being pushed that's keeping it engaged that's it nothing else is like holding the rack into that gear so as soon as you let off it pops up uh, if you drive it, drive it, drove it down again, it would move forward and uh, do another cycle. But it's uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. So I know that's not the best explanation in the world, but it's pretty simple. It's not it's not complicated. So yeah, basic, super basic. Let's plug it in and maybe you can see how it works on the inside. Okay, again, the way this works is this linkage pushes that little roller down on top of the rack. The rack is held up with a spring, so when you engage that, it pushes that rack down to grab that spinning gear. Drives it forward, if you let off, the rack pops up. And when it pops up, it stops moving or the spring underneath drives it back. Alright, let's fire this thing up. I'm going to put a few white marks on here so you can see how things are moving. We'll just turn this on here now. Very smooth. It's actually not spinning very fast. Really, probably about 200, 250 RPM, maybe 300 at the most. Engage it. When it gets to the end, it lifts up on its own. I guess that's because when it gets out there, the spring has the ability to lift that higher. That's why does the kickback thing I'm guessing is when there's pressure on this it can't kick up it's being driven down and staying in gear so that's actually a pretty good insight into what you want to split and what you may not want to split and if you're splitting something where the cut is more of an angle it's going to push that down it's going to push on top yeah that's pretty well it I'll just have to put this all back together now. It's surprisingly simple, actually. I was really surprised how basic a mechanism it is. And after running it and finishing up my wood, all my wood is pretty well done. Even them ugly ones are gone. I'm just keeping them too. I want to make some uh, tabletops or something out of that big bastard. And I uh, got all my wood piled there. But yeah, it was about two and a half cord. You got a five foot wide pile, four feet tall. And uh, she's good. It's 15, 16 inches. 
uh, inches, feet long. So quite a bit of wood. They're all ash, that'll keep me nice and toasty. And yeah, that's that's pretty well it. I don't even think I'm gonna upgrade the motor on this thing. I was talking about that. It seems pointless, really. Um, I think if you actually wanted any more power from the thing, you'd ha just have a bigger flywheel. But then you'd run the risk of ripping gears out. So really, the thing's engineered for what it's engineered for. And I think messing with it would probably wouldn't be beneficial. If you want to split bigger shit, get a bigger splitter. So yeah. So that's it. There you go.